Hello there. Oh, hello. Glad to have you back with us. Thanks. Hope business will be better. You can't expect too much on your second trip. <laughs> Try telling my boss that. Guess that's true. But costume jewelry ought to go good now. More people working. New factory opened up last week. Men's pajamas. Well, what makes Bredenville a three-horse town now, huh? Farming, copper, and men's pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> I got to remember that for my missus. You know, she was crazy about those earrings you gave me. Oh, glad she liked them. They're a good item. So is this. Good morning. Good morning. 307, Miss Sherman. She's a new nurse up at the mines. Swell shape for a nurse. Wish I carried merchandise like that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. My missus will love that. Uh, 216, nice double with cross ventilation. Oh, fine. Oh, say, before I forget, I've got a couple of rookie salesmen coming in on the next train. Supposed to teach at the selling ropes. Think we can get a couple of connecting rooms? Uh, I'll hold 214. Good. This must be yours. I thank thee, neighbor. You're welcome. You suppose the children would like a little dessert after their lunch? I thank thee. I thank thee. Would share with us? Well, I thank thee. What are they dressed up for, a masquerade? They're Amish people. Been dressing that way since about Bible times, I guess. What for? It's part of their religion. They're real good people. Run the best farms in the state, never use machinery. Oh. Just the old horse and plow and their hands. Very interesting. Tickets, please. <laughs> Mr. Reeves, the time lock just clicked. Oh, oh, the, uh, thank you.
sorry, mister. Hey! I was only trying Beat to... It. Do you have anything on birds' habits, Elsie? I have to give a talk for the ladies' aid next week. In the uh, file index under ornithology. Thanks. I'll be back in a few minutes, Doris. Thanks a lot, Martin. That's okay. Run along, Georgie. Run along home, boys. What is boys. this? What is this, Steve? You and Georgie are best friends fighting. Why? I hit him first. You want to tell me why? No, sir. Okay, Steve, you're the boss. You better go home and clean up before your mom sees you. Okay, Dad. Trains are running late again, Gus. Why don't you pull on a few more trucks? The shop's got eight of the trucks tied up. As soon as they release them, I'll put them back on the job. Carl 3. Come in, Carl 3. Oh, 03 over. That's Martin right there, over. What is it, Howie? Over. Mr. Fairchild Sr. is asking for you. He's ready to leave. Over. I'll be right there. Over. 
I'll stop by the shop and see if I can't step up a bit. Take a bite out of them for me while you're at it. didn't matter, I switched to a later plane. I'll be at the Prince Edward Hotel in case you need me for anything. Things will be quiet around here for a while. That isn't why I waited for you, Shelley. I wanted to ask you to keep an eye on Boyd. Don't worry about him. He's fine. No. No, he isn't. You know that as well as I do. Well, I'll be back next Friday. Have a good trip. He just wanted to introduce himself. He'll call again Monday morning. And Mrs. Martin phoned for you to bring home some more pablum. She must be bathing him in it. An international medals called and said their order was three days overdue. Why'd they call me? Well, Mr. Fairchild had the call transferred here. Senior? Junior. I said you'd call him back. Okay. If you need me for anything, I'll be in Boyd's office. I think I'll call out when my superintendent on his way to ask me why I didn't take call from International Medal. All right, tell me why. This isn't my day to talk to people. Then talk to me. What difference would one order make? That's not the point. You know, you're a lucky guy, Sean. Well, I bet you never figured out why. Why don't you tell me why? Must be a lot of reasons. No, just one basic reason. Your old man was a failure. A financial flop. That's why you're a success. And vice versa. Simple arithmetic. Failure breeds success, success breeds failure. Look, Boyd. Why don't you stop feeling sorry for yourself? They say when she'll be back. No, sir. Well, try to locate her. Where, Mr. Fairchild? Try the beauty parlor or the country club. Yes, sir. That's another reason, Shell. I mean, why you're lucky. You always know where you can reach your wife. Big joke. I never could figure out why you bother playing golf. You don't like the game. I look good in sweaters. Being out on the green with a caddy holding the pin and that little red flag blowing in the breeze, it makes a pretty elegant scene. Starring Emily Warren Fairchild. True. You better get your legs down. Why? What's wrong? Well, people come walking by here, you know. For a man who's supposed to be the leader of the wolf pack around here, you sometimes sound like a prissy backwoods preacher. Your husband's office is calling, Mrs. Fairchild. Tell them Mrs. Fairchild is out on the course. Yes, sir. Waiter. Yes, ma'am? Have the operator tell my husband to meet me here for dinner. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I thought you were going to have dinner with me. Don't ever try that again, Gil. What? Pinning labels on me in public. I didn't mean it that way. Where are you going? You said I was out on the course, didn't you? Today? No, five or six is all. One company? Suit yourself.
Still mad? You know what's the matter with you, Gail? You're rich, eligible, and you like yourself. And because those little hunky waitresses from the other side of the town think you're hot stuff, you believe it. Or you're not. You're everything and nothing. Thanks. Oh, why don't you give up? And get a wife of your own and stop trying to make love to everybody else's. Now, uh, here's the entrance to the bank. This is the inside. The cages, the desk for the manager and the woman clerk. Yeah, look, the name place. The guy's name is Reeves. The other one's a Miss Shirley. Name's on there. I was just Play telling off, you. I counted six people working. I wish those broads weren't there. Sometimes they start screaming. You ever see a bank without a woman? No, no. Okay, then. It happens to be one of the hazards in a caper like this. I picked this spot just because the hazards were leased. No bank guard. Only two troopers to get out of town before we pull the place. What do the uh, safe look like to you, Chad? Well, Harp, uh, it's a regular 120-hour four movement time lock. But it's set to open every 15 minutes. Well, we might get hung up for 15 minutes. Yeah, we might if things break that way. That's why we're going in five minutes before closing. We'll draw these blinds and just sweat it out. Nobody on the outside will be suspicious. As far as they're concerned, the bank's closed. Their watch is slow or something. Yeah, and I didn't notice any back entrance. No, we go out the way we came in. Hey, this is getting rougher all the time. Tie it up, tie it up. The important thing to remember is we've got to get inside that bank five minutes before closing. If we run late, we end up with nothing but sticky fingers. Because at noon sharp, they'll screw up that safe door that won't open again till Monday morning. Is that clear? Yeah. How'd they get going now? Pick a spot for slick in this. Later, we'll go over the setup a few more times. Yeah, well, what about a car to get us out to slick after the job? That's no problem. I got it figured. Oh. When I get back. Give me your eye, Pop. Hiya, Bobby boy. How are things at the office? Where's your mummy? Hi, sweetie. How's the little whip? Huh? What's the matter with you? Ice cold. Fair trade? Better take the baby in, Millie. It's getting a little breezy. Oops. Come on, sweetie. Where's Stevie? Sent him to his room. Been fighting with Georgie, of all people. Yeah, I know. I got in on the tail end of it. Did he tell you what it was all about? Not him. Like father, like son. The two original clams. That's why you love it so. <laughs> Stevie! I'd let him stew a while longer. No, sweetie, I think he's had it. Right now, he's at the stage where a fellow needs a friend. Oh, I made reservations at the club. Seven o'clock for us. I'll be ready in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hi, Steve. Hi, Dad. You know, I hear the trotter biting like crazy up at Ronerton Creek. What do you say you and Georgie bury the hatchet and Sunday morning the three of us will sail up there and catch a limit? How about it? No, thank you. Look, your problem couldn't be that big, could it? You're not going to spank him, Shell. Of course not. But I don't understand it. He and Georgie have been like twins ever since they were knee-eyed to a duck. Look, look at this, Daddy. 
How did that happen? Stevie took it off the wall in the den and busted it. I think your son and I are going to have a little talk. Let it go, honey. No, Shell. He can't go around destroying other people's property, his father's or anybody else's. Not now, honey. Why would he do a thing like this, Shell? It isn't like him. It adds up. Georgie's daddy won a medal at Iwo Jima. And I won a picture frame. Simple. Hi there. Hello. Yes, neighbor? I wonder if you can help me out. My car broke down on one of your back roads. Must be a mile or so from here. Can I use your phone to get some help? We are Amish people, neighbor. There is no telephone. Oh, well, uh, how far is the nearest bus line? Oh? I will hitch up the team and drive thee to the highway. Uh, Martha... Oh, I don't want to take you away from your work. Oh, please do not concern myself, neighbor. Come here once, Martha. How do you do? This gentleman has walked a long way and is thirsty. But wilt thou fetch some buttermilk while I hitch the team? Uh, please wait here, neighbor. All right. It, it will be but a moment. Oh, there's no hurry. You're very kind. This is a pretty big place for one family to operate. The Lord in his goodness hath provided so. Yeah, he, uh, he has at that. How do you feel? Sleepy. I just want to thank you for sticking up for me this afternoon. Did Georgie tell? Did he go and tell? No. I kind of figured it all out when I saw the picture frame. Sorry I busted it. That's not important. But why you did it is. I don't know, Dad. I don't know. Look, Stevie, all I want to show you is that you have no reason to be ashamed or embarrassed for anything I did during the war. You see, Stevie, all of us can't win medals. There's many, many different ways to fight a war. Now, the War Department gave me no choice. They told me to stick to my job and to see that all my men kept digging copper. Don't you see, Stevie, all a guy like myself could say to his son is to tell him the truth and hope real, real hard that, well, that he'll understand. Look at me, Stevie. 
Every dad wants to be a hero to his son. Some of us just don't make it, that's all. Gotta keep this shutter wide open. Perspective and dimension. Most important things for good pictures. Yes, sir. Fine hobby, pictures. Man's gotta have a hobby, guys. Name is Roy, Miss Fairchild. Sure. You know any place else I can look for my wife? No, sir. She didn't meet me at the country club. Said she would, but. She didn't. I tell you that, Gus? It's Roy, yeah, you told me. Hi. How do you do? Hey, Gus. Roy, you know a man's got to have something. A family, a wife, something. I got a hobby. Perspective and dimension. Yes. Best results. Bartender, scotch and soda. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Fairchild. Hello, Roy. Yeah. It's Harry. Harry Reeves, Mr. Fairchild. You seen my wife anywhere? Thank you. No, sir, I haven't. First she says, meet me. Then she leaves word right at the club. Don't meet me. What'd she tell you, Roy? Harry. Harry Reeves. The bank. Fine institution. Thank you. We use it, you know. Yes, I know. You're our largest account. You work for us, Roy? Harry. I'm the manager of the bank. You're the guy that counts the money. That's right, Mr. Fairchild. Harry. Call me Harry. That's your hobby, counting money? <laughs> I guess you could say that, yes. How about a wife, Roy? You know how to count wives? First, you break them in little pieces. Teensy, weensy pieces. And then you count them all. Every lousy, rotten piece. Don't uh, mess up the place, will you, Mr. Fairchild? Oh, sorry. This stuff gets you in trouble. First you drool, then you marry him. I am married, Mr. Fairchild. Hi, Linda. Hi. Nice girl. You two going together, Roy? Don't say things like that, Mr. Fairchild. I'm a married man. Why, I, I, I don't even know her. I fix that right up. Come oh, on. Please, 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 don't, don't get me involved. Please don't. Respect your wishes, Roy. Why don't you dance with her, Mr. Fairchild? You want to dance with Linda? Is that what you want? No, 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 I, I can't dance. I just thought you might like to keep her company. I enjoy watching people dance. <laughs> sure. I'm a fine dancer. Looks like you're doing pretty good, boy. Harry, call me Harry. You want to dance? Think you can negotiate? You kidding? I was All-American negotiator at Princeton. Get a load of the hungry banker. I don't blame him. 
you know, it was like a Swiss watch. Watch it, son. You know how easy you get transected. You really are good. All them out. Do you always drink this much? Half it, that's all. Just half it. You're a pretty unhappy guy, aren't you? One of the worst times. Where's your wife? Emily? She's got a hobby. Two or three hobbies a year. How about you being my hobby? I don't like proposition. Oh, I apologize. Sincerely and truly. Okay. It's forgotten. Can't understand you. It's your kind of money. You could have your pickup girls in this town. Oh, my pick. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, well, now, don't say it like that. You make me sound like a traveling salesman on the power. Then I'm sorry. I just got some soda. What? You're pretty nice. Now, I'm afraid to say thank you. Where were you ten years ago? High school graduation, Milwaukee. Wish I'd been there. Why? Because that's when I got married. You ever cry over spilled milk, Linda? Doesn't everybody? I guess so. Even over skim milk. Linda. Yes. How about you and me? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. You don't like propositions. For instance. Well, like the two of us going away together. You're drunker than I thought. Oh, no. I've given it sober consideration. Why me? You'd be good for me. What would you do if I said yes? We could leave right away. Go any place you want to go. Let's dance it over for a while. Come on. How'd you make out, huh? Sit down. The spot I picked is a pushover. Religious screwball, his wife and three kids. Nobody close to the farm for miles around. Well, how come they picked a place for his people? Can slick wait for us on some road? Sure, right out in the open, so people could spot the truck and identify to the cops. Now, this is the safest bet you ever had on. No telephone, no car, no mechanical gadget of any kind. It's, it's against their religion. Uh, the kids make me nervous. Oh, stop, Billy. Can you tell Slick? About an hour ago. He'll be carrying a truckload of hay so as not to attract attention. Now, here's our schedule. Between 10.30 and 10.40, we grab a car in town. You know, something we know runs good. At 11 on the nose, we meet Slick, take over the farm. By a quarter to 12, we're back in town, close to the bank. Then, Chappie, you phone the state cops. Report a big auto accident the other side of the turnpike. Good. Right after the cops leave, we walk into the bank. Fine. 90,000 squid. Tax free. 
Let's save the cheers and go over this some more, huh? May I ask who you are? Linda Sherman. And what you're doing here? Don't talk down to me, Mrs. Fairchild. I don't like it. I merely asked what you're doing here. You wouldn't have to ask. She stayed a little closer to him. Get out. Might as well. The only reason I stayed was in case Boyd woke up and needed me. I'm quite capable of taking care of him myself. Well, well. That's a new wrinkle. Especially after... Ten years of kicking out his insides. Get out of here. Now, right Don't now. Don't push, Mrs. Fairchild. I didn't have to bring him home, you know. We had other plans. And all we did was talk about them. Maybe next time we'll get more definite. Would you like me to have you thrown out? Why don't you get mad enough to try it? All I want is an excuse to pull that hair right out of your stupid head. Guess you don't have the guts. Better latch on to him, honey. Drunk or sober. He's the kind of guy I've dreamed about owning all my life. have the heebie-jeebies or something. I can't sleep. Oh, that's natural enough. Night before a big job. Well, not that cucumber. He's sleeping in there like a newborn baby. <laughs> Takes a good man to do that. Yeah, I guess so. The trouble with him, though, is he's real mean. You know, out and out mean. Well, what's the difference? He's on our side. Talking about being mean. There's nothing in this world as mean as a mean woman. You know, I got to thinking about all the things that happened to me on a count of women in there when I couldn't sleep. Boy, they can sure ruin you. Let's get some shit out of here. Remember the broad I married, Hart? Back in Detroit? <laughs> yeah. There was a real dilly for you. When I first married her, I thought she was a real sweepstake prize. Well, a little on the skinny side, but that's always the way it's been with me. No meat on them, just skin and bones. I wonder why I go for skinny broads. Parmalee. That was her name. Remember her? Yeah, I remember. Left me for an undertaker. No kidding, a lousy two-bit undertaker. And to tell you the truth, I was half glad to see her go. She had too many bad habits got on my nerves. She used to go around the apartment all day in one of them, uh, you know, Chinese house coats. Practically lived in it. And screw you habits like that. Yeah. And all winter long, she'd have a cold. Boy, she was the world's champion when it come to a cold. And every two weeks, I'd catch it from her. I'll bet I caught better than 50 colds from that broad. 
That's what started me on this. Okay. Boy, she... Let's call it quits to get some sleep, huh? It's gonna be a rugged day. Okay. Somebody's down there casing the building. Just a guy walking his dog. Hmm. It's okay. Good so night. I was just keeping my eyes open. Okay, so it's a guy walking a dog. I'm just keeping my eyes open. You want me to be on the ball, don't you? You don't like to jump down my throat. It's good night. Elsie? You stole this, didn't you? You don't have to answer. I know you stole it. Just because you're manager of the bank and you can attach people's salaries doesn't give you the privilege of making accusations. Would you rather I went to the police about it? I just dare you to go to the police. Huh? I just dare you. When your wife's at home asleep, you sneak out and watch that girl undress. No. You're disgusting. There you are, Mr. Peeping Tom. I just dare you to go to the police. Wake up. Boyd, listen to me. I want to talk to you. I have some coffee for you. Please, Boyd, wake up. Okay, okay. I'm up. Really hung 
down to Butte, didn't I? Where's Linda? It's four in the morning. She left. Darn nice of her to get me home. She didn't mind. She has a yen for you. Sympathy, not a yen. She's interested in you. She said so. I'll keep it in mind. Yes, I'll take this up to my room. Boy, can't you drink it here? I want to talk to you. What is it this time? I drink too much for my own good. No, boy, no. The divorce routine. You want to be a free woman? Not that you aren't free. I mean that in the freest sense of the word. Boy, let's not quarrel tonight. Let's not go off on that tangent. Let's try to talk the way we used to when we were first married. Way back in my sober days when I really thought you were in love with me. I was. And I still am. And alternate weekends. The way you're talking now, you must have gotten yourself into a nice fat jam there. Boy, have you stopped loving me? No, I'm afraid not. A jerk like me goes right on loving you, stone sober or crying drunk. Well, if it's any consolation to your pride, I've tried to behave here at home. Yeah, it was a good fight, Mom, but I lost. I said I tried. I didn't say any more than that. Well, thanks for the consideration. <gasps> What's the use? While you were asleep, I thought of so many things I wanted to say to you. I wanted to beg for your forgiveness. I wanted a chance for us to go away together. To start over again. To leave here. Leave this town, the mine. But it wouldn't have been any good. It wouldn't have worked. We can't change, not us. You're an alcoholic and I'm a tramp. Where could we go? Where am I? was just talking. No matter where we went, we couldn't always stay in the dark. We'd have to face the daylight sometime. And I'd see you looking at me and wondering. We have to try. We have to. There's nothing without you. It's always been that way. A terrible feeling inside me. When you're gone, I let myself think where and with whom I can't breathe. After that girl left tonight, I went upstairs and I sat in the dark. You tell yourself the truth in the dark. I was remembering all the things I'm ashamed to remember in the light of day. Why have I done these things, boy? What's the matter with me? Am I sick? Do I belong in an institution? Oh, no, no. Well, I've read about people like me. They're sick people. I shouldn't associate with decent people. Don't say things like that. Let's just talk about going away. You and me. Oh, could we, boy? Could we? Sure, we can. Why not? There's nothing to hold us here. Nothing. I love you, Mama. I love you, boy. I've been cheap and rotten. But I've never stopped loving you. Never. Never. Put the 
the shotgun together after we meet Slick. Oh, I wish this pushover didn't look so easy. We have 12 minutes. Make sure you don't leave any fingerprints around. Wow. Nothing like looking neat and clean for a stick-up. Were well, you expecting a war to break out or something? How many times you been in stir, break boy? Too much. Well, I've been inside three hitches. One of them was on account of not having enough ammo to back out of a revolving door. Never again. What time do you want me to pick you up? About 2 or 2.30. Be a good boy, okay, Bobby. Okay, Daddy. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Martin. Hi, you boy. Bought some new equipment. Going out for some big ones tomorrow. Did the kids patch up things? Not yet. They will. Well, I hope me and Stan get in some fish before the season ends. Hope so, too. Good luck, boy. Say, would you mind giving me a lift? Sorry, but I'm only going a couple blocks down the street. Just do like I say. You won't get hurt. All I want is the car. Turn left, then straight ahead. Stop for those two guys in the corner. Why don't you take the car and let me out? Don't teach me my business, mister. Telling me what this is all about? Just happens we need a car. You drew the lucky number. Why pick me? There are plenty of other park cars. We don't want anything reported stolen. Like Button up. Phone. Hold it at 30. No more than that. Time. How does it look back in town? Pretty good. The farm's about a half a mile from here. We'll lead the way in. We'll park the farmer and his wife and this yokel in the barn, up in the loft. That way, you'll only have one exit to watch till we get back. Good. Let's get started, then. Everybody in the barn. 
Come on, inside. Don't you feel well? well? Oh, no, 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 just a little headache. It's, I'll, I'll get some aspirin. I have some in my desk. No, 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 thank you, Miss Shirley. I'll, I'll get some of the drugs so I need the fresh air. You look pretty chipper for the morning after. It's the first time in years I thought the sunshine looked good. Incidentally, I'm glad I got a chance to thank you for bringing home the remains last night. You want me to wrap them, Mr. Fairchild? Don't bother. They're going into a suitcase in a little while. Taking a trip? Yes, ma'am. Emily and I thought we'd get out of town. Nothing for me, thanks. Where are you planning on going? serious, I'm afraid. About 20 miles north of Bradenville. Main highway. Yes, sir. stay in New York a day or two and then fly to London. Hey, Mr. Reeves. Oh, good morning. My wife's waiting for you at the bank. She has to pick up some traveler's checks. Oh, right away. Yes, sir. Excuse me. <clears throat> Maybe you'd better give me another card. Still two minutes to wait. Tell Dale then stroll around. I'll stay close to the end. Right. Emily. Hello, Gail. How about golf tomorrow? I'm sorry. I'm going out of town. Out of town? Yes, on a long trip. With my husband. Oh, I see. Well, I'm happy for you, Emily. Happy for you both. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Who 
Forgive me, Mrs. Fairchild. I'm terribly sorry to have kept you waiting like this. That's all right. I just wanted to get some traveler's checks. Certainly. About how much? Like? $5,000. Well, it looks like you and your husband will see the world on this. No, just gonna find out how to get born all over again. That's all. I beg pardon? It wasn't important. How do I make this out? Cash will be sufficient. Excuse me, please. I've been receiving many annoying letters about an overdue payment. This will close my account and save me the trouble of doing any more business with this bank. Uh, Miss Braden, I, do, I don't handle this. Miss Dowd, the second one I prefer handles. your personal attention. This impudent letter came from you. I, I sign all of the bank's correspondence, Miss Braden. You're a man of many hidden talents, aren't you, Mr. Reeves? Excuse uh, me, but it's almost closing time. Certainly, yes. Miss Dowd, the second window down, Miss Braden. Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, will $100 denominations be satisfactory? Oh, I think so. I beg your pardon. Did you happen to notice where the man who drove this car went? No, I didn't. I'm sorry. That's fine, Daddy. After I cash a check. Morning, Mrs. Martin. Good morning, Hi, Bobby. Hi. On the receipt, Mark paid in full. Yes. Everybody stay where you are. This is a holdup. Sit down. Just do what we say, no one will get hurt. All right, come out of those cages and keep your hands where we can see them. Keep moving. We have two minutes before the safe opens. Stop it! Leave her alone. Sit down, mister. I'll kill you quick. Shove those in your kisser, son, and go back there and suck on them. Thank you. You're welcome. Bobby, don't do that. Settle for what we've got. Just a few seconds. We've got enough. Come on. We got it all. Clear the doorway.
You don't know me. My name is Martin. I live in Bradenville. They forced me to bring them here in my car. I managed to scrape the adhesive loose. Is there anything up here that I can uh, cut my hands free? Downstairs? They took the ladder away. One of them's out there with a shotgun. Pull your feet up. I'm going down. As soon as I cut myself loose, I'll come back for you. Is that man dead? Yes. May the good Lord forgive thee. It was him or us. Vengeance is only the right of the Lord. We'll discuss that later, neighbor. Oh. Meanwhile, our guy's friends might be coming back here. We'd better take the truck and leave while we can. We will not leave our home, neighbor. Let's not make sermons, friend. Let's concentrate on getting your family out of here. Clear from that door. Wow. Well, how'd he get out of the barn? There's something screwy here. Where's Slick? Maybe he's in the truck. Huh? I'm gonna take a look. All right. shells in his pockets. Forgive me, neighbor, but I cannot resort to violence. Do you want them to come in here and kill your family? The good Lord will watch over us. He's not in the truck. Be 
ignition key is gone, too. Mm, doesn't look good. Wait a minute. Hey, you in there, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What happened to the man we left here? Why don't you come in and find out for yourself? Sounds like he's got the shotgun. And the ignition key. You better leave it his car. If you out of your mind, it's probably broadcast on an all-state alarm. Right? It has to be the truck or nothing. Hey, well, how do we get the key? First, we find out if he has the shotgun. OK. Hey, inside! Can you hear me? Yeah, and I can see you, too. Okay, but we're not looking for extra trouble. Just throw out the key to the truck, we'll clear out. Don't be a hero, mister. Is there any other way in here? No. Good. Start switching the bags of the truck. Get the rest in the front seat. Two minutes, mister. That's all you've got to think it over before we set fire to the barn. Neighbor, thou must not heed the threat of evil men. Did you hear what they said? They're going to burn this barn down, force us out into the open. Only if it be God's will. Do you mean you're going to stand pat? If to stand pat means to resist evil, then yes, neighbor, we wish to stand pat. Time's up in there. What do you say? Okay, Chappie, bring it up.
Better help your family friend. You're going to be all right, Mr. Reeves. Do you want to sleep some more? No. This will make you more comfortable. Oh. Just you stay put. No moving around. Am I, am I going to live? Of course. You'll be going home tomorrow, Monday. And now I'll call your wife. She's in the waiting room. No, please don't. There's something I want to tell you. It'll keep. You know, Miss Sherman, it won't. I've got to tell you now all I have the courage. If I wait, I'll be too ashamed. It's about... It's about the way I've been acting. It's about you, I mean. Watching me in the drugstore? Going down the street? In the bank? And dancing? Forget it. You mean you, you knew? I wouldn't be female if I didn't. Now that you've confessed, you can rest easy. But that isn't all of it. I mean, I've got to tell you about the nights. I, I used to take the dog walking. Over and over again. I'd wait until you came home. Then I'd just, just stand there and watch you until the lights went out. I didn't know that. I tried not to. I really tried. Well, it's over, Mr. Reeves. We've both learned a good lesson. Hereafter, I'll pull down my shades.
She looked awful, didn't she? Like she'd never been alive. Never. Go on and talk about it, Boyd. Talk it all out. Well, it's just that it's so strange. Only a little while ago, we were sitting in the living room talking about our trip. Emily was drinking coffee, I remember. Sitting on a divan, alive and, and healthy. Does it uh, bother you if I go on this way? No. It's just that I'm looking for some sort of an explanation. It's so stupid and pointless to be alive in the morning and dead in the afternoon. Everything you ever thought or planned is just left hanging in midair. All those loose ends of your life left hanging. Whacked off and hanging. You know, Emily was always afraid to have a baby. That was one of the things we were planning, to go away and then to have a family. We're talking about it this morning. She said she wasn't afraid anymore. She didn't know she only had four more hours to live. I figured it up. All she had was four more hours on Earth. I'll drive you home. Go away, Linda, for a little while, please. I don't want you to see me cry. <laughs> Hello, Stevie. Hi, Dad. I've been waiting to see you. <laughs> They hurt you, didn't they, Dad? Oh, not very much. We'll probably have to call off our fishing trip for a couple of days. Sure, that's nothing. I already told Georgie. Boy, you got all of them, didn't you, Dad? Look, Stevie, things like that are better if they didn't happen to you at all. Why, you're the only one in the whole town. Maybe the whole world could have done it. Even Georgie's father would have been scared. <laughs> What makes you think I wasn't scared? I was plenty scared. Nah. Stevie, being scared is only normal and human. No one was ever a 100% hero. Except you. Yeah. <laughs> Dad, will you let Georgie see you? Will you? Sure. Where is he? OK, fellas. <laughs> Come on in. I think it's at the office. Fine. Fine. Boy. 